Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition. Last time, we finished up going around and just doing some collecting of various bits and pieces around the world that we had missed, killed some spiders, and then found True Soul Edwin here, spent all of our remaining inspiration trying to cr crush the parasite that came out of his head. Failing to do so, let's see what our companions make of that. This so-called true soul carried a tadpole. It is no god they hear. It is a geish deception, sown by the parasites devouring their minds. That such a thing lives inside me is unbearable. Well, we'll have to do something about it. A deception. Do you think this god of theirs is a mind flayer ploy? The voice is real. Its words are a fraud. Shared delusion is not a conventional symptom. The Mind Flayers have a plan for these true souls. Which means they've a plan for us. That's interesting. Did you feel that? It wasn't us doing the talking. There was a power behind the words. The parasite. We spoke, but it commanded. Swaying others just like that? Now there's an advantage we can't afford to ignore. You can't say that for certain. Not while we don't know the true cost. If I were a parasite, I'd want my host to think I was a benefit. Be careful with this advantage. Well, Astarian approved. Okay. We've got the gang together. And we have the open road ahead of us. We could go north. Oh, but we have the Owlbear Cave right here. There's something that is going to be... I've done this now twice. Alone. Is there going to be a way for Astarian to get down? Although, technically the party doesn't know he's prone to acid damage in spots like this yet. He's just going to hang out all on his lonesome... All right, buddy. How far can you jump? Not very. Don't die when you do this. There's one. Ah, that was fine. Uh, what was I saying? We did this fight, this whole encounter, twice when I was doing solo runs, and we managed it on both occasions. Sometimes fairly close to the risk of death, but we made it. And so between us now, we shouldn't have a problem at all. What's in here? Let's see if these guys are hoarding anything that we might like. That stench. Dead owlbear prey, no doubt. But before we do that, let's go down here and see the mysteries of religion. A lunar statue. Mm. It is stinking cave. We don't have anyone who's kind of a religious background for this. By magic. There's no but space hey, this open. we'll take all the useful stuff. Potion of speed in the river there. And then who's our most perceptive hero? Probably Shadowheart, I guess. Um, so we've got Perception plus one. Perception plus one. Shadowheart's going to be at least plus three. Yep. Yeah. And unless Astarian is proficient... Oh, he's plus three as well. Well, we'll send Shadowheart, the religious type, over there first, being our cleric. Not that the rest of the party, I suppose, won't all try and follow along. But back here, you can find a prayer sheet. If we take it, hop on back. Oh, they've, uh, I think that tooltip or that piece of conversation has been added to make this a little easier to figure out but if we come here now 
and read this while stood in the vicinity of the chest. Empty words, clearly. No? Nothing but empty words, clearly. Hasn't fixed... Hasn't made this be non-magical. Is that... What if somebody else reads it? Chests unlocked. My prayers are answered. I guess Shadowheart and her religious tendencies can't open the chest, or at least can't get the magical He's barrier there. off. Or even destroy it if possible. Why? This rubbish is an offering to Saluna. At best, it's worthless. At worst, who knows? Could be cursed. Do not trifle with that moon witch or her trinkets. Only trouble will follow. Let's see, what options do we have? Intimidation. We'll do as we please, thank you ever so much. And so I will not be adding uh, guidance here because this is the kind of conversation where if if um, Frobo was to just go, oh, you know what, I'm going to guide myself, make this a bit easier, Shadowheart would be like, what the fuck are you doing? That's not really cool. So we're going to skip that and just go with our charisma and intimidation proficiency. There's the big rolls we couldn't get at the end of last session. Fine. Perhaps you can sell them for a couple of coins. All right, what we got? Handcrafted pendant. Uncommon amulet. The words, may this protect you, little Robin, love mum, are engraved on the back. The wearer of this item gains writhing dance. Whenever the wearer has 50% hit points or less they don't provoke opportunity attacks that's very interesting then the silver necklace is just cash idol of saloon and onyx stone well i think that's going to be a good option for lazel given that she is going to be the one who is most likely to be all up in the main part of the fight so let's have her equip that. And then that's everything done down here. We can proceed up to the owlbear fight above. We should probably Into the shadows. get a bit sneaky. Hello again. Oh, hello, Astarian. Are we not all sneaking? So we've got an owlbear. We've got the fissured stalactites around, but not, you can see by the pools of water, not directly underneath where they want to stand. Not sure if there's a way to get them to stand there, but hey, that's their prerogative. Is the whole party coming this way? It is. So we're going to get ourselves here. I think Astarian now would be a suitable time to... Uh, if we make sure we are equipping our crossbow, coat that weapon in a little bit of poison, and then take sneak attack ranged. Cannot have disadvantage against the creature. Why do we have disadvantage against the creature? I shouldn't, should I? What is happening? Why would I have disadvantage? And what's with the purple smoke? I'm so confused. Alright, well, standard attack it's going to be. Not sure why the disadvantage, but hey, everyone else is sneaking. My favorite. We missed that one. Frobo. Let's go with a menacing attack. They make the save, so they are not frightened. 
And then Lazel, what have we got? I don't think we need to trip them or anything right now. But a lovely crit. And that's the whole party in the order. Obviously, we still can't do that. And the owlbear is going to get to finally take a turn. But they were surprised, of course. So they missed their first action. Now, we only have 30% on that. So if we run to here as Lazel, get our sword out, we can action surge. Gives us another action. There you go. So now we have two actions. So one of them can be spent on dashing. That will get us to here. And then we can do a trip attack or a disarming attack. Now, normally I'd do a tripping attack, but because all of our allies are going to be attacking with ranged attacks, and if you are a ranged attacker attacking a prone creature, then you have disadvantage. So we're going to skip that. And instead, let's make sure we have Riposte switched on. And then attack with our greatsword with two hands. I guess it's a bit dark in here for Lazelle as part of the problem. And there's our turn to critically miss stuff. Let's go with a pushing attack and see if this can cause Lazelle to get an opportunity attack when it moves out of the space. Nope, it makes the save. Fair enough. Shadow Heart. Right, well, not the best round, but we're doing pretty well over here. And after such a level of damage, the owlbear is not happy. They make multiple really aggressive attacks against Lazel. We all miss. Right, let's step quick. Push forwards. We can cunning action dash, which is one of our bonus actions. That's going to let us get up to here. Then we can main hand attack. And it spent our other hand as a bonus action automatically. Down to 13 HP. Now, I really don't want Lozel to go down. Um, so, Frobo, you're up next. Cost. Ooh. And let's go with a pushing attack again. And we missed that, of course. This is not going well. All right. I'm officially in hell. I am fury. I am death. At least they went after Astarian instead of... Lazel. There goes Mama. The cub looks from you to his dead mother. A single strike will end his suffering. Absolutely. Nature might have provided for it. Too late now. Right, there's the head of the broken spear. And then we can just go and pick through the rest of this stuff. The Albert egg. Good loot. These are supposed to be worth a fortune. The Oak Father's Embrace. Medium armor, 13 plus dex. Undead creatures that attack the wearer receive 1d6 radiant damage. Beasts that attack receive an additional would deal an additional 1d6 radiant damage. Not sure who of us might wear that. I'll take the pork loin though. That's going to be good eats. And then there's lots of piles of bones around, but I think most of them aren't going to have anything more than just the bones themselves. There's a backpack just up this ledge. 
we'll do do our due diligence. Make sure we're collecting everything we could need. And over on this side, there's this piece of cliff. But I don't think there's actually anything up here now. Doesn't look like it. So I think it's time for a short rest. We get all of our superiority die back on short rests. That's so broken. Assume nothing. We're going to be powerful as all hell going oh, forwards. Now, of course, we could take a long rest in this cave and see just what the uh, long rest looks like when we camp away from home. But we need to make best use of all of our rations and supplies. So won't be doing that unnecessarily. And since we've still got another short rest ahead of us and so many superiority die, second winds to use... I should have used Lazel's second wind before we short rested because then it would be refreshed now as well. It's the little things that will make a big difference down the line. Especially after the early access where it's all new encounters and new surprises. Right. With that done, is there a way up? There is. I think we've got just enough time to go and see a dog about his man. Repositioning. There's the prerequisite pool of blood. What is... That definitely had a circle on it, didn't it? Strange. Oh, maybe it was the movement circle. That would make more sense. Uh, here is Scratch the Dog. But look, a body. I want things off of bodies, thank you. Yeah, alright. Let me take the stuff. Don't touch me. Well, it really won't let me... Oh, there we go. We got there. Fine pair of leather boots. Couple of apples. Some cash. And we'll take all these letters. Does Scratch look really different? Uh, shoo them away. Mm, I mean, we do kind of mean them harm. Especially this party. Oh, especially when this is going to go so well. The dog's hackles raise. Well, the dog can just sit around looking at a dead corpse. That's fine by me. Or... Bye, dog. 5 XP is 5 XP for a bunch of cutthroats like us. Every little counts. And with that, I think that's a place to call it an end because either we can go north and see about a tiefling and some cultists or we can head west and see about some goblins and some dungeons. So until I make that decision, I'll say thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider liking or subscribing. Please don't judge me too harshly for killing Scratch. It's just what the players would do and we're role-playing today. Otherwise, thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.